Running Ansible against a lot of hosts or hosts where the ping is high can be painfully slow. There are two ways I know of to increase the speed of Ansible. The first way is by enabling something called pipelining. Pipelining is a native feature of Ansible that's been around since version 1.5. It's disabled by default, but according to the documentation, can give a very significant performance improvement when enabled. The other way is by using something called Mitogen for Ansible, which is a tool I've discovered recently. Mitogen is a Python tool for writing distributed self-replicating applications, and there's a plugin for Ansible that claims to give a 1.25 to 7x speed up in Ansible. But is it any faster than pipelining? In this video, I'll show you how you can install and enable Mitogen for Ansible, as well as how you can enable pipelining, and we'll run some benchmarks to see which one is faster. Let's take a look at how you can enable pipelining and Mitogen in your Ansible projects. I've prepared a little demo project here with three different Ansible configuration files. I'm currently looking at Ansible underscore default. This is our default configuration and the only things that I've changed is I've set this inventory option to be this inventory directory. And I've also set this callback underscore whitelist option. So I've set callback underscore whitelist equals profile tasks. What this second option does is at the end of the playbook, print out how long the playbook took to run, as well as how long the 20 slowest tasks in the playbook took to run, which is just going to help us benchmark the different configurations. Next, let's take a look at this Ansible underscore pipelining configuration. So to add pipelining to most systems, all you need to do is add this SSH connection group and set pipelining equal to true. On some systems, you may have problems with become or sudo in your playbooks, and it's likely because you've got require TTY enabled in your Etsy sudoers file. But for most modern images on EC2, such as CentOS 7 or Ubuntu 18.04, require TTY is disabled by default, and all you need to do to enable pipelining is add these two lines to your default Ansible configuration. Finally, let's take a look at this Ansible underscore Mitogen configuration. All I've done is follow the installation instructions from the Mitogen documentation. So the documentation tells you to download and extract this gzipped tarball and then modify your ansible.cfg with these two lines. What I've done is I've downloaded and extracted that uh, gzipped tarball into a plugins directory inside my project. So you can see here in the plugins directory, I've got a Mitogen-0.2.5 directory, and that's just the contents of that gzipped tarball. I've modified this Ansible underscore mitogen.cfg to include these two lines. So I've got the strategy plugins and that's pointing to that local directory inside plugins. And the strategy that I've set is mitogen underscore linear. So that's all you need to do to enable mitogen in your projects. In the next section, we'll benchmark the three configurations to see which one's the fastest. Let's benchmark our three configurations to see which one's the fastest. I've prepared a little demo playbook here, and all it does is install the three most popular roles from Ansible Galaxy. So I've got Jeff Geerling's Java, Nginx, and Docker. And I'm going to run this playbook against three different instances. What I've got here is three T2 micro instances running in the closest region to me, which is Sydney. Each instance is just running the CentOS 7 base image from the AWS Marketplace. If I go to my inventory hosts file, you can see that I've named each one. I've got CentOS 7 default, CentOS 7 pipelining, and CentOS 7 mitogen. And I've just set the Ansible host variable for each one of those. And at the bottom, I've just set the variable for that CentOS group to make sure that the Ansible user is CentOS. To run this playbook against each host, I've created this little shell script to make it a little bit easier. So what I've got here is three different calls to Ansible playbook and I'm calling Ansible Playbook with the different configuration in each one. So if we look at just the top one, you can see that I'm running ansible underscore default.cfg as the configuration file, and I'm limiting that playbook call to CentOS 7 default to that instance. And I'm redirecting the output of that call to this logs default.log. You can see here in the logs directory, I've got these three logs for our different instances. So in the next section, I've got Ansible pipelining limited to CentOS 7 pipelining, outputting to pipelining.log, and then in the final one, we've just got the same thing, but for Mitogen. So when I kick this shell script off, it's gonna start sending log data into each one of those log files. I wanna be able to monitor them at the same time. So I've prepared this terminal window here that's running tail-f on each one of those log files. In the left pane, I've got the default configuration. In the middle, you've got the pipelining, and on the right, you've got the Mitogen configuration. So if I go back, jump down into the terminal and kick off that shell script, and I jump back into the terminal, you'll see that the output is coming down at the same time. So pipelining in the middle has taken an early lead, but you can see very quickly that the right-hand side of Mitogen is really pulling in front very quickly, and it's just finished. So that entire playbook finished running in just 10 seconds with the Mitogen configuration. 
And just as I finished saying that, the pipeline configuration finished, and that's taken around 17 seconds to finish. So you can see that Mitogen was around twice as fast as the pipeline and configuration. And if we look back over on the left-hand side, you can see that the original configuration is still going. So the original configuration has just finished and it took 42 seconds to complete that run. And it just shows how frustrating Ansible can be to run on the default configuration. So 42 seconds for the default, 17 seconds there for the pipelining configuration, which is over twice as fast as the default. And then around twice as fast as a pipelining configuration, we have our Mitogen configuration. And anyone that's run Ansible before will know that for any non-trivial playbook, 10 seconds to finish running a playbook is really, really intense. So our Mitogen configuration was around four times as fast as the default. So that's a 300% increase. And I know I said 600% in the video title, so let me clarify. So the 600% speed increase I talk about in the title of the video is actually from a more detailed benchmark I did on toptechskills.com where I wrote an article of the same title. So in this article, what I did is I benchmarked this same playbook that I benchmarked in this video, but against three different regions. So in this video, I tested it against Sydney, which I have a 50 millisecond ping to. But in the article, I also tested against an, a region that I have 150 millisecond ping and another one where I have a 300 millisecond ping. So that's US East 1 for me. And in the US East 1, the biggest speed up I was able to see was for a subsequent run. And as you can see in these graphs down here, as the ping gets higher, the speed up that you get from Mitogen gets even higher as well. So the biggest speed up I was able to see was 7.33x in the US East region for a subsequent run of a playbook, which represents a 633% speed increase. So if you're interested in seeing the more detailed benchmarking results, head over to toptechskills.com and check out this article, and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I really hope you're as excited about Mitogen as I am. If you'd like to read that article, please check the link to Top Tech Skills in the description. And otherwise, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks again for watching and I'll speak to you next time.